Walsh Protects You and Your Family presents the Singapore Parenting Festival. Join a series of six free webinars at Singapore's largest virtual festival for advice on your pregnancy and parenting journey. Like having a safe pregnancy and delivery, getting ready for motherhood, nourishing your baby, building a special bond, ensuring your child's well-being, and giving them a head start in life. Register now. That's not all. Get awesome discounts and deals in the grand sale. Singapore Parenting Festival, proudly brought to you by MediaCorp and the Asian Parent. Scott's multivitamin gummies support your kids' growth. Dumex Do Grow, comprehensive nutrients. Try Milo with more milk and 50% less sugar. Nature One Dairy, your partner in parenthood. The following partners. And Shopee, number one online shopping platform in Singapore. Shopee! The Singapore Parenting Festival's lineup of webinars that we have. And this evening, we are talking about maternity insurance and a confinement guide. Now, the Singapore Parenting Festival is happening right now, in case you guys didn't know. And it's actually proudly brought to you by MediaCorp, the Asian parent, and Shopee. Hi, Ming Chow. <laughs> all right, so I do see a lot of familiar faces and familiar names all right, coming in. Thank you for making the time to join us today. So we do have myself, um, mother of four, that mom of four. Some of you do know me as, as that more affectionately, um, but my real name is Dawn, <laughs> Dawn Sim. I do have uh, four daughters um, who are aged between five and 15. All right, so when it comes to parenting, I think I have a lot to say, but we also have Another two experts where it comes to maternity insurance and confinement, we do have Joanna Chen, who is a senior executive financial planner from AXA Insurance, all right? Uh, we also have sister Lillian Pong, who is uh, the senior parent craft and maternity care consultant with so many accreditations under her belt. I, I have learned so much from uh, sister Lillian Pong from uh, the dry run that we had before. So I'm really excited to, you know, have her share more of these, uh, uh, her knowledge and her experience with everybody right here. Um, so those of you who are joining us today, we are actually going through the maternity insurance and confinement guide. Do also stay tuned because we do have some uh, surprises from Shopee as we go along as well. So do get your phones ready because you actually will get to scan some QR codes. Um, and if you can't scan with your QR codes, don't worry, there's actually going to be a link that comes um, along with it as well. Okay, so we do have Q and A, uh, uh, time set aside for you guys to have some Q and A at the end of this session, and it's only when you type in your questions through the Q&A tab, and then these questions will actually be selected and we will go through some of those um, that sound a lot more interesting. So if you have burning questions already, do get them lined up and we will be hopefully picking them out to discuss uh, at the later part of today's webinar. All right, so everybody, when you first come in, you are actually automatically muted. Please do not go and try and unmute yourselves. Okay, it's very distracting. Um, questions are very welcome. So like we said earlier, please use the Q&A box um, that's available for you to put in your burning questions. Um, I'm sure some more will come up along the way during today's webinar as well. And it comes up at the end, all right? So um, this webinar is also recorded for those who are not aware. Um, and it will actually be played on the Asian Parents uh, Facebook page. Uh, so look out for it on the platform if you want to re-watch this webinar once again, right? And you can also let your friends and your family know about it too. Okay, so thank you so much once more for joining us today. Um, just uh, one more quick introduction with uh, Joanna Chen. Um, I think I, I didn't speak enough for her earlier on, but she's also our first speaker for today. Okay, so... Um, Joanna is actually a senior executive financial planner from AXA Insurance, uh, and she's with uh, Desmond Quant organization. Now, this agency unit represents AXA Insurance with 14 years of experience in the financial planning industry. Her area of focus is in young family financial planning that includes income protection, medical protection, and coverage for newborns, as well as will planning advisory, right? So if you want to write a will, you know, somebody who wants to write a will, you can look for Joanna as well. Okay, with her expertise built over 10 years with young families, honestly, Joanna, you don't look like you've been in the industry for 10 years. You <laughs> look so young. <laughs> Okay, but yes, um, yeah, with over 10 years working with young families, um, she actually works closely with pregnant moms and moms-to-be. Joanna is very passionate about offering advice and educating young parents on their financial planning needs as well. But what she's going to talk to us about today is about maternity insurance, all right? So yeah, if, uh, I, I think if uh, those of you who are very keen to start a family, you really should be paying attention to what Joanna has to share with everyone. 
Um, and do look out actually for our audience today. There, there are actually um, two, two speakers. Yes, we, we have very, very valuable information to share with you guys, but do pay attention as well for when um, you know, the QR code comes out for you guys to scan, all right? So have your phones at the ready. All right, now we are going to have a poll, okay? Um, and I need you guys to actually put the answers in and we are actually very keen to find out what you guys actually think. Have you considered taking maternity insurance before? Have you considered taking maternity insurance up before? And I'll share a little bit about my personal experience, okay, uh, with you guys, okay? Now, with um, maternity insurance is something that I only thought about at a later part, and I'll, I'll share a bit more about it um, as well, but I do highly recommend it to, you know, moms-to-be, um, or if you are actually planning to start a family, right? So uh, when the poll comes out, please just let us know when you actually have uh, considered taking up maternity insurance, right? Now, before we actually go on to that uh, poll, I do want to have uh, Joanna just uh, come in and uh, you know share a little bit with us about diving into maternity insurance. So uh, Joanna, our audience is very eager to hear from you on the basics and the needs. Why do we need maternity insurance? Over to you. Hi, a very wonderful Wednesday evening to all. And thank you, Singapore Parenting Festival, for having me in this session to share maternity insurance. Thank you, Dawn, for the introduction. You're welcome. Awareness of maternity coverage has grown in recent years with popularities, having different insurance company coming up with different plans, catering to different needs of mother. Now, um, I have been very fortunate to be able to collaborate in a hospital in Singapore since the late 20. 2007 for almost a decade with this hospital, providing financial advisory role to young parents, pregnant mommy in the area of newborn insurances, income protection, and educational planning advice. So generally, um, I have gathered a few top concerns for mom, whether you are first time mommy, or subsequent mummy, I think more or less there are some worries or concern you will have. May I have the next slide, please? Well, I just want to jump in really quickly, Joanna, because the results of the poll actually came out. And it's very heartening to know that the majority actually have considered taking up maternity insurance. In fact, 83% have decided that, you know, they've considered uh, taking up maternity insurance with the uh, minority of 17% saying no. But well, I'm I'm actually very happy that that people considered taking it up because it's, it's really important. I share my story with you later. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I I will take you to um what it is what is this about? How it will help you? And generally, as I mentioned earlier, uh, these are the least of worries pregnant mommy will have. Okay, they were always constantly thinking whether this pregnancy is going to be okay. Are they going to give birth? To a healthy baby, you know, cost of hospitalization don't come cheap. And especially if there's a condition, the hospitalization fee can be exorbitant. Yep. And, uh, yeah. Uh, can, I, can, I, can I jump in now? Because I'm just dying to let people know. <laughs> yes, please don't share your experience. Yes. Okay, so Joanna just talked about exorbitant uh, sums of money that people can spend when you don't actually, you know, um, invest in a, in a good maternity insurance, right? And this has to be done early on because you never know when complications will, will come up, right? Even if it just, you know, it, it may not just affect your baby, it may affect you as well. So your life might be at risk also. Um, and like for me, I didn't have to, I didn't have to worry so much about insurance for my first two babies because um, I gave birth to them in France. Um, my husband's actually a pilot. So when we went there, you know, it's under the Air Force. So insurance was all covered for us. Um, and I just didn't have to think about it at all. So this kind of thing, like, you know, going through it twice, and I came back to Singapore to give birth to my, to my third daughter. After we were in the US, we came back. And then um, I, I ended up going into the ICU uh, in the later part of my pregnancy, about seven and a half months. I ended up in ICU because my amniotic fluid was leaking. So um, I, I was in bed in ICU and my husband came up to me. and was like, you need to get out of here fast. 
was for each day it was like a thousand bucks at least okay so i didn't have uh, maternity insurance at that time so it was very I, I was like, why didn't we think about it? Okay, so for the first, for the fourth one, obviously we got it, okay, but there was no complications. But then you, you don't want to wait until something like that happens, right? I was really seven and a half months, you know? So um, yeah, don't, don't wait till it's too late. You know, I think, Joanna, you can share with us like, you know, how early on you can actually take on maternity insurance, how much it costs, because I can tell you for the amount of money that I spend in one day, it probably is more than what I would pay for um, for, for you know, the, the maternity insurance already. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yes, God. When, which year was that? When this uh, 2000, 2011, because um, I gave birth in 2012 for my third one. Yeah. Right, right. So Dawn has just shared her fair share of experience regarding hospitalization, how much she has chalked up. In any case, uh, most of the time, um, a normal delivery won't cost you a lot, okay? It's usually when there is a condition or in the event of a mishap, that is where you really need to make sure that you have a good buffer for the financial cushion portion. And also, I think uh, it's always at the back of every parent's mind to have sufficient saving for the child education. At this juncture, I would like to share with you a life story of a client of mine whom I have met in the year 2008. I will call them the Yong family. In 2008, Mr. Yong was then age 30. Mrs. Yong was age 29. Their very first born, uh, um, I would say, unfortunately, uh, was premature. It, it was a preterm baby. So what happened is that um, this child needed to be in the incubator for 30 days, one month. The per day incubator cost was $1,000. Don mentioned earlier, it was $1,000 per day in 2008. So it was 30 days. So it's a 30,000 plus plus. That wow. was a lot of money for a young couple at 20 to 29, 30 years old. So I know them very well. Until today, mm -hmm. uh, we are still very much in, in touch. Uh, they have, mm -hmm. uh, this is the third child recently. Last year, they gave you to the wow. third child. Yeah. yeah, so is it a third child thing? <laughs> that they got the Oh no, but this one was their first child, right? Is it was it? the first child and I was thinking they probably would be so scared to give birth to the subsequent. But fortunately, the subsequent pregnancy was all all, all right. Mm. So what yeah. I was trying to say is that this sudden mm -hmm. um, episode did kind of like uh, dig up a chunk of their bank saving. Yeah, it's not a small sum at all, you know. No, so yeah, even not. for me. Yeah, by the second day, I was like, oh no, I need to get out of here, I need to get out of here. But, but you can't do that, you know, with, with um, the, the infant. It's just, you know, I can tell myself, you know, when I go home, I'll just lie down and I'll do nothing because that's what you're making me do here, right? <laughs> but for the baby, no, you can't. Yeah, so I can imagine, you know, it's kind of money, you just you have to spend it, but it, it's really not a small sum at all. Not at all. And thankfully, no. this little girl, um, I remember I saw them. This little girl was very, very tiny. And now she's, uh, I think she's about uh, 2008. So she should be about 12, 13 years old girl. She's a big mm. size girl. Yeah. yeah. So moving on, what exactly is maternity insurance? Mm. Okay. Maternity yeah. insurance essentially is an insurance policy that covers unexpected complication arising from pregnancy which could if affect the mother or the child mm. so mm. this policy will provide a one-time payout to help mm. to offset some additional unforeseen costs and part of it will also include a daily hospital benefits Mm. So uh, just one mm. quick question, uh, Joanna. Yes. Um, mm. the for now, I mean, of course, you know, it's, it's on everybody's mind right now, right? COVID. So is it included in the maternity insurance now? I wouldn't say it's particularly that benefit COVID is embedded in the policy. However, uh -huh. your normal uh integrated health shield plan would have covered that. Mm. So COVID-19 is not a, a condition as per se being factored into the maternity insurance. Mm. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, oh. thank you. So, <laughs> good question, though. I think a lot of people will also ask that question. So, um, where did I stop? So, I welcoming a baby into the world is definitely a very joyous moment for new parent as well as subsequent parent. Hmm. Uh, more so, more so if any of you here are first time pregnant, this is a new transition and it can be overwhelming. So, you'll be wondering in, in this uh, maternity insurance, um, does it cover mommy? And baby at the same time how long does it cover how what is the duration of the coverage and what about after giving birth does it cover after birth as well so these are the things that i will run through mm -hmm. in my subsequent slides um now before i touch on the complication and congenital illness there are essentially two types of maternity plan mm -hmm. the first one is the standalone maternity insurance Mm -hmm. And the second one is a maternity insurance that coupled with an investment link plan or coupled with a traditional whole life plan. Mm. I will share later part, what is the difference between the two? Okay. So uh, typically across insurance provider that they, they cover pregnancy complications from as, uh, can I have the previous slide? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, from a basic of eight condition to 15 condition, uh, some of the common pregnancy complications that I have personally administered is gestational diabetes, fatty I liver. Had it. <laughs> oh, Dawn, you have it. With my first one, with my first one. Yeah. Um, I actually was, that is really my, my own doing because uh, I love durians. Um, I love eating sweet stuff. So when I was close to eight months pregnant with my first baby, uh, I actually had gestational diabetes. So my doctor ordered me to stop eating durians because one day I would eat one square box, you know, like the big box, not the small styrofoam one, but the big square. So uh, when, my, when, when, I, when I got gestational diabetes, my husband was like, okay, okay, I'll just bring you to Geylang. We just smell the durian from the window. He'll just wind down the car window and I'll just smell it. And after that, we go home. <laughs> Still <laughs> So yes, you, you never know that you're going to get it as well. But for my for my next three, no, I was eating a lot of chocolates, but I, I didn't get uh, gestational diabetes. <laughs> yeah, more, more often than not, it is something that is actually controllable. Um, mm. Fatty liver of pregnancy, you try mm -hmm. rupture. Okay, now these are just some of the, uh, this is non exhaustive There are more mm. than this complication. And yeah. as for congenital illness across the different insurance provider, they cover from a basic 15 condition to as high as 26 of them. So mm. some of them that I have personally came across are club food, uh, clap palate, clap lips, Down syndrome, congenital deafness. Mm. Again, the list is non exhaustive it depends on which insurance company they will give you the different list of congenital illnesses and pregnancy complication payout. So beside yeah. uh, the above that I mentioned, these, these are all lump sum payout. Okay, Maternity yeah. insurance will usually cover hospitalization as well, but in the form of daily hospital income benefit. Mm -hmm. So yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, can I have the next slides, please? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Joanna, yeah. I have one question. Uh. So yes. you just mentioned the uterine rupture one, right? Um, mm. So I guess this applies to, to multiple C-section um, moms like myself. I never thought about that before. Like, until you mentioned that. No? So yeah, um, point to note, uh, for those who have actually gone through a C-section before, I think it's very important for you guys to think about this uh, possibility. And this insurance actually does cover uterine rupture risk. Yes. Mm. And um, those conditions that happen usually, it definitely warrant an inpatient or uh, hospitalization. So this mm. is where the hospital coverage comes in for mommy. And for baby, um, why does the baby, beside the normal delivery, three, two to three days, some babies stay longer in the hospital, mainly because... Um, you know, they have, uh, like the story that I have shared with you earlier, the child was actually premature. Definitely, the child needed to be in the incubator for one month, mm -hmm. thereabout. So, uh, incubator, admission into ICU or high dependency unit, phototherapy of a, a neonatal jaundice. So, these are some of the um, things that will result in a prolonged hospitalization of the child. Now, yeah. um, 
for incubation, I would say that uh, I have come across preterm, premature baby usually have a higher risk of complication. Okay. I have also come across a full-term baby, but still need to be in the incubator. Reason because they have low birth rate, but the, mm -hmm. the weight of the child is too low. Yeah. And there was another, uh, this is a personal friend of mine, uh, mommy has uh, gestational diabetes. So the baby when was born, uh, she needed to be briefly uh, incubated. Mm. Huh? So generally the reason of um, hospitalization, again, uh, they are, uh, as, as I mentioned, um, the lease are non-exhaustive. It cover from as a basic of 15 all the way to 26 condition for the child. Wow. Actually, uh, babies, uh, Asian babies, having jaundice is quite common, isn't it? Um, it is I mean, all common. four. Yeah, all four of my daughters had it, but I think the one who had it most severe was my second one. So again, like I didn't have to worry so much about it because she had to stay in hospital for, um, I can't remember now, but at least like, you know, three, four extra days. Maybe it was longer. I can't remember because this was in 2008. Um, so when after she was born, you know, she had to be in the incubator, like you mentioned, for, for quite a number of days. Um, I, I was there with her. Um, so, you know, that was also covered. Like the mother could stay there with her so I could breastfeed her as well. But I think if that were, hap were to happen here in Singapore, it would cost so much more. Um, and yeah, you just, like I said, you know, um, most Asian babies actually do have jaundice. You just don't know the degree of it, um, the severity of it. So if you cannot, nah, then you have to stay in Singapore. I think... Get, get prepared to pay a lot of money. <laughs> I've uh, um, I'm not too worried about uh, newborn jaundice because jaundice, mm. uh, most of the time, you just need some of the baby, you can go back with a mum and you just mm. have, um, you know, some sunlight or phototherapy. What is worrying is um, those infant jaundice that is... Um, they are, Extended they are, duration. Yeah, yes, and, and this mm. usually is a... Um, the infant jaundice occur because the baby blood contain an excess of the bilirubin, mm. uh, a yellow pigment of mm. the red blood cells. So if this persists uh, 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 for a longer period of time, it might not be very positive for the child. Yeah. 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 Okay. So then it comes, okay, uh, you know, uh, pregnant women will be all bombarded with so many medical terms, congenital illness, uh, pregnancy complication and mommy are no short of any options and choice in the market. So mm. what is the best, which is the best maternity insurance? Uh, may I have the next slide please? Yes. Yeah. So picking up the best insurance, maternity insurance, I would say personally, is a plan that best suits your needs. So I'm mm. going to guide you through this. Have a list and ask yourself, what exactly do you want the plan to do for you? Question you might ask yourself is, do you want to have a head start of the child insurance, whereby even before the child is born, the child is being covered? Is this important, number one? Number two, is it having a guaranteed hospitalization coverage for my newborn is very important. What about psychological counseling for mental wellness for the pregnant mom? Is this important? So you, you have to run through the list and, and look at the list yourself. What are you looking for? And then, uh, like I said, there are so many insurance provider providing the coverage. Um, you know, some of the unique uh, feature that I would like to highlight is maybe... Maybe the plan cover neonatal jaundice is something that is very important for you. And um, you probably has an IVF and you have four babies. And this probably is something that will address to your need because this particular plan cover four babies in one single pregnancy plan. Mm. I mentioned wow. earlier, <laughs> uh, how Up about... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so that's why I say have a list of questions. What are the things are you looking for? And then match it with the, the insurance provider and see whether it matches your needs. If it matches your needs, that is the best cover for you. Mm. 
And then there are also women that are very worried about C-section. Emergency C-section does come with a big cost. So yeah. is, that something, yeah. is, it, is it something that is important for you? And, and if it's important for you, then look out for those plans that has this benefit. Mm -hmm. what, about, what about having a peace of mind that your child, the moment the child is born, you know in Singapore, you can't live, you can't have no hospital plan. Not possible. Okay, mm. um, just for your information, um, audience, in, in Singapore, so long that you are a Singaporean children, uh, your child will automatically have a CPF account that the government will credit the money in that, in the child account. So that money can be used to buy your child a health, in, integrated health shield plan. Beside all mm. the vaccination, health checkup that you can use, so this wow. is another yeah I, I didn't know that I honestly didn't know that but I can tell you that you know you never know when you you might end up with a, a cesarean a c-section an emergency one so I, I had the best intentions of wanting to go through natural birth for my first one ended up with a c-section um, emergency and then my second one also I wanted to try a v-back I wanted to do a vaginal birth after c-section also did not happen um, so yeah both were emergency can you imagine if I did that in Singapore I think my husband would disown me <laughs> oh okay <laughs> so, but but you know if you have if you have um in insurance yes that's that really that really helps so much but to to have to pay for two emergency c c sections without coverage i think that's going to be quite a killer for for most families yeah so have a think about that mm. and i so, teach yoga <laughs> oh okay so dog yeah. is a yogi <laughs> Yes, so don't, don't, yeah, and I always thought that I would end up having a very easy natural birth, right? No, you, you never know. And I have so many yoga teacher friends as well who end up with C-sections. So yes, don't, don't think that, you know, just because you stretch so much and you're so active that you're going to have an easy birth. Nope. <laughs> So yeah, thank you, Don. So uh, ladies, put down a list of, um, you know, what are the things that will best suit you? In, what do you look for? What, does, what do you want the plan to do for you? So it's essentially a peace of mind in terms of financial cushion in case of any unexpected emergency, you will definitely incur higher expenses as, as opposed to a normal delivery. And then are you looking for something that gives your child a guaranteed protection, even your child arrive? What about in terms of um, planning for your child future education? So these are the things that you really need to put down on a list of paper and, and match it with the insurance provider to see whether they're able to meet your needs and requirement. Mm. Okay, so um, at this point, uh, I, I wanted to say that it is never, never too early to plan. Yeah. Okay, last but not least, I would like to share that um, finding the right financial planner is just like a lawyer. Um, not every financial planner are specialized in working with pregnant mom. It is advisable mm -hmm. to find a financial planner who not just know the product itself, but able to have the relevant knowledge to walk you through, giving you the appropriate advice, like what is baby bonus? What does it do? There is this thing called the CDA. What does CDA do for your child and yourself? And in Singapore, um, Singaporean permanent residents, we all are automatically covered a medical life coverage. Is that sufficient? If not, why? Okay. Now, um, she, he or she, a planner, would be able to guide you through the budgeting portion, how much to be allocated for what. And at this point, I would like to encourage all father and mother to take a closer mm -hmm. look at your own insurance. Why I say this? Because by re-looking at your own insurance cover, this is to make sure that you are adequately covered in in the event of loss of income. As your mm. role as parent to become a parent, your financial responsibility will increase yeah. correspondingly. Mm. You are your child's main source of financial support. So your financial planner will be able to guide you and walk you through all this step by step. And the one very last 
I would say not just last but equally important is your financial planner would must know how to assist you to review your will and your nomination, your insurance nomination. Yeah. Do you know that you can nominate your insurance, uh, no, uh, your CPF for free? And a lot of time when I meet with my client, most of them do not have nomination done. Wow. <laughs> so, so nomination of CPF and nomination of insurance policy are free. You don't need to come out a single cent. Okay? Wow. It is when you do a will, then you need to pay a fee. Um, having said that, I want to highlight something. Uh, when you are married with no kids versus when you are married with kids, it has a great impact on your will and your insurance nomination. Mm. So parents, uh, not just looking at your insurance protection, also have a time with your planner to go through your will and your insurance nomination. Because all of these that I have mentioned are integral part to a sound financial planning advice. Yeah, for sure. Okay, So with this, um, I would end here and I sincerely from my heart, I want to wish all the parents that are sitting in this session a very, very smooth pregnancy journey throughout the entire journey and have a healthy baby. Healthy baby, happy family. Yes, for sure. And you know what? Pregnancy is not the time that we want to have to worry about all these what ifs and what could happen, right? And I think just having the insurance is just going to give you that peace of mind. You know, for from the duration of when I ended up in ICU till I actually gave birth to my to my third daughter, I tell you that period was so stressful for me. I was just like, please, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened until she was born. So if there was the insurance, you know, I wouldn't have to go through all that stress. And you know, the, the amount of stress hormones that, that cause through your veins during this time, it doesn't just affect you as the mother, it actually affects your unborn baby as well. So it's no need on. Just go and get the insurance. I think for the amount of money that you pay, it way more than makes up for, you know, that, that kind of uh, mental stress that you, you would be getting. So um, definitely get some maternity insurance but um just to before we actually move on uh, uh joanna we do have some burning questions from some of our attendees this evening so some of them um have uh questions like you know the first one if we have previous pregnancy complications would we not be eligible to be covered for a new uh pregnancy uh maternity insurance okay also if we can be covered would there be any exclusion or cost more would it cost more Generally, for prenatal plan, um, that there is no um, you know, you know, uh, when you when you have a pre-existing medical condition, usually mm. it will be excluded. Mm. Okay, yeah. so the best thing is during application, declare your previous incident and um, allow the underwriter of the insurance company to know your condition. When they extend your cover, it's usually either a premium loading or exclusion. But mm. even if there's a premium loading. Even if there's an exclusion, I would say go ahead and take it. Yeah. The yeah. worst thing is to, ha to have a situation where your insurance application is being declined. Mm. Yeah. That, that's very, very good to know. Okay. Uh, or to reassure everybody, um, I would also, I would also, also say the same thing. Although I don't have the, the, the numbers to share like you do and the facts to share like you do, but from my experience, I tell you, if I have another baby, uh, I don't think so, but <laughs> the first thing I will actually think about is insurance, okay? Um, that's actually one of the, the things that you really have to um, put your money on in preparing to be a parent, okay? So don't don't wait for, you know, sudden um, shocking moments to, to happen. I don't think you need to live with that kind of um, uh, stress at all, okay? So um, there was one thing though, I and, and I personally... Um, went through that as well. One of the questions that came up is one, one of our attendees is already 34 weeks pregnant. Um, I, I know the answer to this, okay, but let's let Joanna answer this. If you're 34 weeks already, can you still buy maternity insurance? Why not? Because um, the earliest you can enroll in a maternity insurance is upon 30 weeks and uh, some insurer can accept you to up to 36 weeks and there's one insurer can cover you up to, I think, close to 40 weeks. So you are still not late. Get mm -hmm. it done. Get it done. <laughs> Get it done. Really, All really. Right. I mean, uh, sincerely from my heart, okay? If you ask me, mm. hey, uh, Joanna, do I need it? My question to you is, 
can you afford the potential medical bill without additional insurance cover? Mm. Ask yourself that question. Yep. So definitely some food for thought for everybody. Okay, there's the, um, you, have to, you have to go find out as well. Ask, ask Joanna how much your maternity insurance would actually cost uh, versus how much you would potentially have to pay if you ended up with any complications. Really, the uh, how much it is 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 uh, more more relevant when you is tied on to as you as I mentioned earlier in my slides, there are various extension of the lease of cover. So, do you want to mm. stand alone? Do you want to mm. stand alone, or do you want a plan that is bundled with a um a investment link policy? or a traditional whole life. So the premium really depends whether, uh, which kind of plan are you choosing? And one very fundamental um, deciding factor is the age of the mom. Mm. Mm. Yeah. All right, so there you have it, you guys. And you know what? We have some more time set aside at the end of today's webinar, uh, at the later part of today's webinar, where you can ask more of your burning questions uh, when it comes to maternity insurance. So keep those questions coming in because uh, our team from um, the Asian parent as well as uh, MediaCorp and uh, Shopee, we guys will be answering you guys well, your, your questions um, at the later part, right? So keep them coming in the, in the Q&A uh, box where we will actually screen through and see which questions we can pick up at the later part, yeah? Thank you so much, Joanna. And you know what, you guys? We are actually going to have this $3 shopping voucher QR code right here for you guys to scan. And if you do have a problem trying to scan this to redeem the, to get your $3 off voucher, then go ahead and see that link at the bottom. You can actually use that link as well and you'll be able um, to get $3 off, all right? That you can, that you can spend at Shopee, okay? So the first 200 of you guys who scan this um, or use the link are going to be able to redeem it. There is no minimum spend on this voucher. You can use them on Shopee toys, kids and babies category products. But do look out for the TNCs, okay? There are terms and conditions and that apply and it actually expires on the 23rd of May. So don't hesitate. You've only got a few more days to use this. In fact, the Singapore Parenting Festival um, or rather the promotions that happen on Shopee actually do end on the 23rd of May. Do look out. I was actually doing a live stream for them yesterday as well and they do have a lot of good deals, okay? When it comes to... Um, you know, helping mom life, parenting life, do look out for the good deals that they have. Um, and it's on the categories for toys, kids and babies, um, anything that helps you with parenting, right? It is after all the Singapore Parenting Festival. Okay, so you guys have a little bit more time to scan that code and to use that link, your $3 off voucher. You will have one more of this instance coming up later. So stay tuned till the end of the webinar. Okay, thank you so much much for sharing all the information with us joanna it's so informative i'm, I'm learning new stuff from you again today <laughs> i hey, thought we were done at a dry run <laughs> okay thank you thank you so much uh shopee for the qr code um now we're gonna move on to the confinement guide and we do have with us uh sister lillian pong to share with us all her knowledge and experience all right welcome sister lillian and uh, yeah, so those who didn't scan, please don't worry. Okay, the QR code is actually going to be coming back again uh, during the webinar. Okay, so it's time now for us to move on to the confinement practices. Um, and Sister Lillian is going to be sharing with us what uh, she has gained through her many, many years of experience being in this industry to help ladies, moms uh, with their confinement. Okay, Sister Lillian, are you there? Yes, I am. Wow. <laughs> okay, over to you. Thank you, Don. Hi, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our Asian Parents Program. And we are talking today. You have had so much prepared. We are all preparing for you all down the journey of childbirth. And today we are going to talk about our confinement guide. All right. What is Asian confinement? Now, I remember 20 years back. All right. Don't did I, I, I did, need not introduce myself, yeah? 
No, I introduced you at the beginning, but you know what? Let me do it again right now for those who joined us at the later part. Because <laughs> I, I saw the numbers jump. Now it's like, yeah, we have more people who joined us. For those of you who didn't hear my introduction about Sister Lillian earlier on, um, please, let me just uh, do, do her justice. <laughs> All right, so... So Sister Lillian Pong is actually a state certified midwife. Okay, some of you actually would, would have known her um, or, your, or your relatives would have actually consulted with her. Um, she's actually an ex-senior parent craft and lactation advisor Okay, um, from Thompson Medical Center. Uh, she's a parent craft consultant with a premier parent craft consultancy and is a confinement nanny trainer. So if you had confinement nannies, Sister Lillian Pong is probably the one who trained them. <laughs> so here you have the expert. Thank you, Dawn, for the kind introduction. <laughs> All right, Dawn. Just back a little on confinement. Now, I remember 20, more than 20 years ago when Singapore held the first ONG chapter conference for international gynecologists and obstetricians, for international midwives and state registered nurses. And when we did, so quite a proportion of these people were Westerners. And when we speak about confinement, they frown. And they ask us, what is this confinement about? Why confinement? Because everybody link the word confine. All right? Childbirth is something to rejoice. But why are we calling it confinement? Here again, just mentioned, it is an Asian context. Asian context. All right? It is referring to the term post-delivery covering a period of a month. That means 30 days and up to 44 to 45 days in some culture. Because in Singapore, we are a cosmopolitan country. We have Malays, we have Indians, and the Malays will measure up to 44 days, Indians up to 45, you see. But medically, all right, this confinement term is what we call puparium. And puparium covers six weeks, which is also the postnatal period. This time around, it takes up to six weeks, whereby the moms will get to recuperate from their pregnancy, which we always call that when moms go through pregnancy and labor, they go through wear and tear. Poor mommy's pregnancy, your whole Abdomen, your whole womb has expanded to accommodate the size of the baby. All the stretching, all the internal... You're reminding me of a lot of <laughs> my, my, my traumatic past. Which, yeah. you know what, very funnily, it just, you know, that, that pain, you just don't remember. You remember flashes of it. But yeah, now, now it's coming back. <laughs> I hope you sleep well tonight, darling. And then, <laughs> this is where mummies will go through that period of recuperating from all the extension or the stretching that she had carrying that baby in the womb and most importantly we have take, to take this period to prepare moms with a new lifestyle of motherhood to cook up with a baby and breastfeeding all right so let's go to the next slide shall we all right <laughs> So what are the confinement practice that we are talking about? We will be talking about hygiene, rest, support, and diet. Okay, next slide, please. Right, now hygiene. This is a must. Very often, Asians would say that, oh, during confinement, we must not wash our hands. Right. Oh, oh Sister Lillian, can I, can I interrupt for a while before you move on even further? <laughs> we have a poll that we want to ask the attendees today. So mm -hmm. the question is, and we want to see what, what everybody here thinks uh, as a poll. So if you guys can answer this second, second poll question right here, it's mothers shouldn't wash their hair during confinement. So this, this has to come before you move on to the hygiene part. Um, because we're gonna, we want to know whether or not people believe that they should wash their hair during confinement. So let us know your answer and then we'll see who, what the majority uh, believe in, all right? I mean, most of us here, I guess, we're from Asia. So do you think the mother shouldn't wash her hair during confinement? Yes or no? Especially in our climate here, right? So let's see what the answer uh, comes out to. 
Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll know the answer in about 30 seconds. But, you know, let me share with you what I did, okay? For all four of my, of my uh, babies, I only did my confinement properly uh, in, my, in my last two um, post-pregnancy periods, which I spent in Singapore. So with my first two babies who were born in, in France, I didn't have confinement. But for all four of them, I actually washed my hair. Okay, the answer is here. All right, so the, the poll results are out. And um, you know what? The majority actually disagree that mothers shouldn't wash their hair during confinement. So most people actually believe that mothers can wash their hair during confinement. So you know what? Sister Lillian, let's hear it from the expert, you. Thank you. Mothers wash or not? Thank you. Yes, mothers should wash their hair. That is basic hygiene, all right? <laughs> that is basic hygiene. Mothers... Today, I know young mothers, youngsters, all wash their hair every day. But during your confinement, you don't have to wash it every day. You wash it alternate days, that's the closest. But ideal recommendation is twice a week. Why? Because you do not go out. You do so often every day. It's not dusty. Neither do the cooking, you do not get fumes and oil onto your head. So alternate or even twice a week is fine. Why don't people wash hair those days? Because after that, they have a wet head. Though you dry with towels, those good old days, mothers all have long hair, like what Dawn and Joanna had, or beautiful long hair and long stress. <laughs> but it's drier. That's why mm. they do not dry and put their hair. So they go mm. damp head throughout the whole day. Ideally, hair should be washed. All right? Sometimes you hear of this myth that after delivery, you at the end of the month, you lose a lot of hair. I'm sure you all have heard of this. And yeah. attribute it to hormonal changes. Mm -hmm. no, it is because you do not wash your hair for one month. The pause... <laughs> Hair is clogged with oil. Yeah. So the roots, mm -hmm. and when they dry, as you wash your hair, obviously the dead hair will all drop out. So hair should yeah. be washed and kept dry. But do not Thank wash you your for hair. sharing that. Do not wash your hair at 7, 8, 9 p.m. And obviously your mother will frown at you. Okay, in the mornings, in the afternoons, it's fine. Okay? So let's talk mm -hmm. about General well-being. Okay, can we have that slide back, please? Yes, general well-being. Shower is a must. All right, that is general hygiene. Good old days also, mothers were told not to shower because they will get chills. Showers is a must. Now, I remember when I first joined nursing near more than 55 years ago, almost 60, you get mothers walking in with infection because of lack of hygiene. They do not bathe. And when you do not bathe, don't forget you've got your stitches below, which we call the perineal stitches or the episiotomy, where doctors did an incision, a cut to widen the external passage for baby to come out. That wound need to be kept clean. And ideal would be showering, not soaking in the bathtub too much. Mm. So bathe being is a must as well. All right. Can we get on mm -hmm. warm water of yeah. course? Right? On to the next yeah. rest. Rest is very important. Right. Now mummies ideally at least eight hours of sleep a day. And if throughout the day baby takes a nap, mummies go take the opportunity for intermittent rest throughout. Don't mm -hmm. spend your time on your mobiles, on your texts, telling mm -hmm. all your friends the good news. Yes, of course, we rejoice, they rejoice as well. But yeah. let daddy be the one who share the good news so that yeah. you can rest. Why yeah. is the need to rest? Because only when you rest, all right, you can eat the best, you can drink the best. But if you like rest, it's going to affect at least 20% of your milk production. Yeah. 
And I, I can't emphasize this enough as well, uh, Cecilia Lillian, because um, I mean, we, I see some of the, the comments coming up in the in the chat box um, mm -hmm. from our attendees right here. And, and I agree with them, you know, like, you know, it is difficult for us to get eight hours because like, you know, you want to breastfeed and you have to do it often, right? And then in between, if you're not breastfeeding, you're actually looking after the baby, changing diapers, entertaining them, um, burping them. And, and just, you know, in Singapore, I have to say, we are actually very, very blessed because we do have confinement nannies trained right. by you. <laughs> we do have, you know, family around. But when I was in France, I shared with you guys, I was, I was there without, without help, um, looking after my, my two young girls. And it's, it's very difficult. But you know what? Even in nature, even in nature, you see like monkeys and then like many mammals, they will help each other out. Even like wild, the wild dogs, they, they actually have the nannies looking after the babies to, to feed them while the mummies can also rest. This is actually very natural. So have that support, have proper confinement where you can rest because if you don't, like Sister Lillian said, your milk supply is going to diminish. And of course, it's going to be difficult for you to breastfeed. Breastfeeding is actually very natural for us. But you know, if you don't have that proper confinement, if you don't have that proper rest, and of course, and the recovery, then it's going to affect us for sure. Right. Thank you, Don, for sharing. Mm -hmm. Here I'm talking about that eight hours doesn't mean that eight hours at a stretch. It is a to collective total of about eight hours per day. Why do I say so, Don? You can be my testimony again. Now, mm -hmm. why do we say the more you rest, the more milk you have? To prove to you, every morning, for those mummies who have already delivered a baby, before, other than dawn, you would not realize that when you get up in the morning, your boobs are heavier. Right? Why? Because at night when you sleep well, your endocrine system in the headquarters will release the hormone, all right, the hormone oxytocin and pitoxin. These are the ones that pump and work. And when you rest, they work. They will work yeah. the milk supply. So, it's true. Mm -hmm. If you can, try to get that sleep. Yes. Right. And, and it's only in rest, like you said, the hormonal, um, you know, some, certain functions will happen only when you are at rest, only when you are at sleep. It's not just about, you know, switching off and letting your body rest. But in, in that state is when certain functions can happen, like even recovery. So for the mother who has gone through surgery, even episiotomy as well, it's, it's a wound, you know, you need that rest in order to recover. So it's actually very, very necessary. Yes. And when we're talking about resting, mummies, make sure your rooms are well ventilated as well. It is, I'm glad that today's mums are more proactive with the modern concept and all mom, mothers and mother-in-laws are very open to that concept as well. So the rooms are open with the windows wide open. You must allow natural air, ventilation to come in. Otherwise, this is what happened. Now, when you breastfeed your baby, very common complaint by moms when I see them, they say that, oh, Sister Lillian, for the first two to three days when my baby was in the hospital, the baby's latching was good. Baby was up. Baby would do well. But ever since I come home, the baby doesn't seem to like my breast. He, would, he or she will suckle for about five minutes and then give up. Then I said, Mommy, your windows are all closed. Your, there's no fan oscillating, no aircon. So what happens is that Mommy perspire. When Mommy perspires as baby suckles, call them babies, but they are very clever. Baby suckles, they, after a few suckles, they will take off and look at Mommy. Mommy. Why is today's milk saltish? <laughs> because my baby is sucking sweat. Mm -hmm. So the need to ventilate the room. All right? Yeah. Now, so if you are in a room that has an aircon, you can also have the aircon on, but have it down to only 25, not lower. Mm. All right. That's yeah. That's actually one of the questions that um our attendees was asking. Can can they sleep in an aircon room during confinement? Yes, but not mm. oh, up twenty five and not below. That should be fine. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now exercises. Now when we talk about rest, 
we must not forget about exercises as well. Should exercises be done? Yes. And when can we start it? I have mums who are very keen to go to the gym. I'm not against going to the gym, it's fine, but not in the first two weeks or three weeks. And depending on your type of delivery mummies, if you're the best exercise I would recommend for all mums, even those who have C-section, to do the next day following delivery, the Kegel exercise. The Kegel exercise is something that even an eight-year-old lady after her pelvic floor repair, she can do it. So it's mums, I believe you all know what I'm talking about when I talk about Kegel exercise. It's just mm -hmm. and holding the three outlet openings, the urinary opening, the vagina, and the anus. In other words, remember I mentioned in our earlier slide that your body goes through wear and tear. The pelvic floor organ has been carrying that baby all the while like a net. Now it is all loosened. So when you do your Kegel exercise, actually you tone up the muscles. At the same time, you help the wound at the perineum to heal faster. Yeah. And, and actually, yeah, this can actually be done even during pregnancy. Yes. Early onset of pregnancy, you can start to do it already. You don't have to wait till you get urinary incontinence or when you have that laxity in your pelvic floor, that you actually start to do these ego exercises. Correct. I've mm. got moms, you know, who have post c sac Then the next day when I see them in the ward, daddy's holding them on one side, the nurse holding her arm on the other side as mommy tries. They, I'm talking about Third day, second day post season, mommy tried to inch herself down from bed. And then I tell her, come, that leave her to me for a while. Okay? So I told her, mommy, as I hold on to her, I tell her to do a Kegel exercise. She, and then you get down off bed. She says, I can get down off bed. I said, yes, do your Kegel exercise. So she looked at me a bit fearful. And as she landed on the bed, you could see her smile from one side of the cheek to the other. And then yeah, she looked at daddy and said, no pain. <laughs> you see, so the Kegel exercise is very important, all right, to start off with. Then the other exercises, of course, will be stretching exercises. You, as you can see in the picture, or the waist twist exercises that mm -hmm. will help you to lose them. Why do people always say that, oh, maybe she exercises a lot, that's why she get backache. Backache mm. term that is stuck to all our mom's generation. Good old days, people yeah. breastfeed the baby in the 50s and 60s. Only the, the affluent ones can afford milk powder. Most of them breastfeed their babies. And when yeah. they breastfeed their babies, they hunch and feed their baby, they hunch forward, imagine eight times a day, you're going to hunch eight hours. There it was the root of and the foundation for back aches. All right? Yeah. So make sure you have a good supporting pillow on your head of the bed or in the couch when you are pumping or breastfeeding. Dr. Wong mm -hmm. would not get into breastfeeding. Yeah. So yeah, the exercises, I have to say, I mean, I'm a prenatal and postnatal yoga teacher as well. So I do teach ladies in during pregnancy and even after, um, you know, after they give birth, I also encourage them, move. The last thing you, you want to do is to lose all your strength when you have another little human to look after. So of course, sensible exercise, the ones that are actually going to help you in a recovery and not cause more, more problems, right? So there are actually many movements they do. Even this, this picture that you see right here uh, on the screen that Sister Lin, Linen Pong has put up, it's actually a great movement for the arm, you know, when it comes to improving, you know, helping to facilitate uh, the, the milk supply, isn't it, right? When there's too much tightness and when there's too much stiffness and tightness, it is actually going to limit your ability to, to you know, breastfeed. It will actually affect your, your breastfeeding ability. Um, not to mention all that stiffness and tightness. It's not going to make motherhood very enjoyable at all. So yes, there's actually exercises that you can do um, during pregnancy and safely after pregnancy, right after pregnancy, even if you did go through C-sections like I did. But yes, move because it is therapy. Right. Can we have the next slide, please? Well, 
support. That's very important, moms. Now, support have to, for your support plan, you have to pre them and plan them prenatally. Don't wait till you have labor pains to start. Then you start cracking your head as to where do I source for support, all right? Because spouse support and family support. This time, this is a period, I don't know whether to say that we're lucky or not. In a way, we're lucky that daddies, some daddies are having working from home. <laughs> right. Yeah, but it's true. <laughs> it's actually another pair of hands to help. And I find today's daddies, oh, every time when I meet them, I, so far I find all oh, the daddies so helpful. And I always tell mummies, mummies appreciate what daddies have done. It's better mm. than married to a millionaire. He's up yes. to Aaron boy, he's the one who burps the baby. And then some daddies would come, you teach me how to bathe the baby as well. I say, sure. Oh. Done. I think, yeah, that is even more important now, isn't it, Sister Lillian? Because there's a shortage of confinement nannies right now. So I think a lot more daddies or families actually should be should be consulting with you to see how, you know, that family bonding together and looking after a baby. Um it's, it's just going to be a different thing with, with COVID happening right now that, you know, we just have less confinement nannies and maybe more hands-on from, from dads and, and family members. And that feels very proud as well that his contribution has been rewarded, you see, and acknowledged. So that is, I have attended to quite a few celebrities, all right, and share with the daddies, would you like to bathe the baby? Then they think twice and tries and say, you bathe the baby. Mommy, take a video of your bath. Next time, you can show it to your baby. And they were so happy when they succeeded. They told me, Sister Lillian, only if we have known you much earlier. So I don't know. All right? So <laughs> spouse are very important. If you do not have, your spouse are not able to cope up with, or you do not have mothers or mother-in-laws, other family members to drop by, and you need to get a confinement nanny, a helper, please choose a professionally trained. Yeah. Get yeah. One who comes in and think that my duty is only to do the cooking. And mm. especially when it comes to the child care, they still follow the traditional way of managing the baby. And mm. Poor baby mommy. Once nanny leave after her 28 days, mummies are left to struggle with everything and try to correct that baby up from the wrong again. All right? Mm. So make sure yeah. they are professionally trained as well, mummies. All right? Can we have the next slide, please? Mm. It's dinner time for most, but this yeah. one... <laughs> of diet that is very important all right making me hungry <laughs> how do we diet leaves mm -hmm. the texture the uh, text is still the same in the diet leaves never oh, i would just mention about the diet though all right just make sure mummies you are preparing yourself for breastfeeding so you have whether breastfeeding or not, you have to eat well during your confinement. Why? Because you have to build up your body for the strength that you put in. When tear during pregnancy, strength during labor that you put in, you have to, and on top of it, some blood loss that follow following delivery. So we have to think of a good diet. Your diet, you eat not only well, but eat wisely so that it will replenish all your requisites. Um, yeah. So make sure that you get a high protein diet, rich in protein, so that it can help you to your breast to generate your body to generate good breast milk for your baby. And mummies is really rejuvenating. All right. Yeah. Lots mm -hmm. of protein. So do it meat, chicken. All right. The eggs and tofu. All these are very good sources of protein. You can cook them, steam them, or even in soups, you can have one of our very popular one will be the five 
papaya and fish soup if they're talking of food for breastfeeding. Okay. Mm -hmm. What I would like to tell you, mom, is this. When you are having your food, I know back to the olden days as well, sesame oil is a must, right? For frying, they would say, do not use ordinary oil. Use sesame oil. All this is to keep the body warm. But in Singapore, our temperature last year, 2020, there was a day, a couple of days when the temperature went as high as 36.4.6, almost hitting 37. Is that to keep, a need to still keep the body warm? Nope. <laughs> this is all right for countries when we talk about it, for countries that has four seasons, winter, autumn, spring. Yes, in winter and autumn, they need to keep the body warm or the warm. But as in Singapore, eat healthy food. That's good enough. All right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. then, uh, okay, can we have the next slide, please? Yes. How does confinement food benefit the body? All right. I would like to say it nourishes the well-being of the body, as I've just mentioned earlier and replenish blood loss and energy, energy during labor and during pregnancy, and also build up the reserves for breastfeeding. Okay. Mm. Now, good old days, confinement is a day that people used to eat lots of liver, all right? And you'll be surprised if you talk to moms at home, is it normal to take the pig's maw, that is the pig's stomach, um, a mass item by those very ancient confinement nannies because they say that when you go through labor, your stomach goes to wear and tear, so you have to replenish, rejuvenate that stomach. Hello, mm. baby, don't come from the stomach. baby, to come from the womb. All right, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. after some of the myth, you must know where it stands. Where did yeah. we for eating? All right. Papaya and fish soup. This has gone through a research, uh, sorry, a survey, a research, and it found it works. But most importantly, also the art of massage. All right. To sum up in all, I must really say that you must drink ample, mommy. Drink ample. How much is ample? Three liters. First two weeks, two liters of liquid. That would be fine. That from first two days, rather, sorry, from day four, day five onwards, three liters of liquid. I will never use the term water. If I ask mom to drink two liters of water, you see her jaw drop, and then she says, wow, you're drowning me. That is why I <laughs> use the of fluid. That includes morning breakfast, a mug of beverage, the breastfeeding milk, fresh milk, any milk or Milo, that should be fine, all right? Mm. Then you lunch time a bowl of soup, dinner time a bowl of soup. Then down the road, you can have another five, four to five mugs of drink. Some moms will ask me, why is it a little three liters? I always say, by the time your baby is 10 days old, baby might be taking about 80 mils of milk from you. 80 meals times 8 feeds a day, 640 meals of liquid gone. And then a postnatal mom goes to the washroom. From our research, she is recorded. She will lose anything like 1.5 liters of urine. Added together, it is a, a past 2 liters. So unless you pump in 3 liters, mommy should say that I don't know why I'm not having enough breast milk. Mom did not pump in petrol to start a car. All right? So you need to have that water. Yeah. With good fluid intake, you will also avoid constipation. Now, to avoid constipation, you have to take things like vegetable and fruit after every meal. So you have your protein to go into two meals, lunch, if you have fish, Maybe dinner, you have pork, that's two meals with separate. 
protein. Then you will have vegetable and fruits. The question about vegetable, Asians generally here again would think that confinement must not eat too much vegetable because it's cooling. All right, darling. Tropical vegetables are never cooling. All right. You can have your cow. Even broccoli is important. Broccoli is also not a cooling. Cauliflower is not a cooling vegetable. All your snow peas, French beans, all these are vegetables that is fine to eat. They're never too cooling. Why do you need fruits as well? Fruits, when the mom sees you eating fruit, they say, oh, you cannot eat fruits. Fruits are too cooling. Local tropical fruits, papaya, banana, all these are normal. Even apples and oranges, citrus fruits. Why? Because they contain vegetable and fruits contain good source of vitamin C that will help you in your healing of your wound and building up your resistance. They are never too cooling but and must be taken. All right. Can we have yeah. the slide, please? Yeah, I really like the part where you talk about, you know, having the fruits, enough fruits and vegetables to avoid constipation because in particular, I think for those moms who have gone through, you know, surgery, C-section like myself, um, and I can attest to that because of the drugs that are pumped into your body, it actually causes your digestive system to slow down. So all the more, you're going to need a little bit more help to help the bulk of, of your stuff just uh, come out. So if you don't have that, then you're going to, you're going to end up with like days of constipation. It's not fun at all. All right. Hmm. We have the next slide there. The next slide, please. Okay. okay. Now, please can maybe your best friend for cheers and toasting, but not for confinement. All right. Liquor in Asian kitchen. Once a mom, they are pretty aware that during pregnancy they are advised to abstain from liquor. But mm -hmm. When baby's out in the kitchen, you see a mini bar or a mini bar. There's Dom there, there's Rinkanis, there's lots of variety of liquor. Liquor ideally should not be consumed. Why? Because as you consume liquor, it will reduce your milk production, number one. So, but if mommy insists that you have to take, by culture, you have to take liquor to here again is to keep the body warm. All right. If you have yep. to, only 10 meals is good enough per day after you have breastfed that baby. And if it's still needed, you do it in cooking. You can put inside your cooking. But I always feel that it's a waste. Liquor is not cheap. So why bring it to cook and let it evaporate? Why evaporate? For what you pay, okay. Mm. Herbs yeah. wise, yes, your herbs are actually guided and recommended by professional physicians, they are considered safe. Then you take, other than that, don't just buy off the shelf without knowing. Mm. Yeah, can we have the next slide there? All right, so that's it from uh, our sister Lillian who has shared so much with, with us. You know what, even after being a four-time mom, I'm, I'm still learning so much from you. And I believe that those of you who are first-time moms, you have so much more to learn from, from sister Lillian. You know, we, the thing is we don't know what we don't know. Okay, so the more you can actually find out by going for workshops and, and causes, um, the, the better it's going to make it for you as a mom, as a new parent for yourself and your husband or whoever else is going to help you looking after your baby to just make this journey a lot easier, a lot less painful because you know what? Sometimes babies cry. It's, it's not because they want to irritate you. Nobody wants to do that, okay? They, they can't talk, so they're crying for a reason, okay? So, you know, sometimes you don't know how to read the signals from, from babies and you know what? Experts like Sister Lillian is going to be able to help you figure out the kinds of sounds that babies make, the kind of signs or, or behaviors that they have that can tell you what is it that they need. Are they hungry? Are they in pain? Do they need to burp? 
things like that. So just equipping yourself with all this information um, and going for webinars like these are going to be so helpful um, to you know help us make, make it through parenting uh, with a lot more ease. So with this, we're going to start off with answering some questions right now. We've had so many people putting in questions that they had um, in the group, in the in the chat group, uh, sorry, in the chat box. So I'm gonna just put out some questions that people had uh, put in right here. Okay, so it's gonna be targeted to both um, uh, Joanna as well as uh, Sister Lillian. So the first question right here is actually from a daddy. Okay, what are the most common and serious mistakes we should remember to avoid when taking care of the wife or child during this this period of confinement? And this will be um, you know targeted to Sister Lillian. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Now, what are the the question again, please? The question is um, during the most common. What are the most common and serious mistakes that we should avoid when taking care of the child or the mother during confinement? Okay, good. Thank you. Now, when taking care of the newborn, the most important thing is the art of burping. You know, every time when I see a case. I would tell the mom the minute I've set her and put the, show her how to put the baby into the cot, I would tell her, mommy, this baby is going to sleep and will not be up until three to four hours later. I always see the jaws drop because their babies get up every one to one and a half hours. Reason, Don, you did a very, very good uh, guidance there when you mentioned about the different types of cry which I, because this comes under the category of baby care all right i always tell them that two types of cries mummies and daddies you need to identify if a baby cries with the eyes closed and it's a long whiny cry look at the clock ask yourself when was you the time you last fed your baby and hmm. how long does the, how much did you give the baby so the baby is sleepy, but yet before I knock off, I'm hungry. Understand? So you have to increase your supply and give to the baby. Sometimes mummies don't like to ask me. So when do I increase the feed? I will always smile at them and say, mommy, I'm sorry, I don't know. You ask your baby. When baby cries, you look at the clock. What time did you feed the baby? Pet the baby and play with them mm -hmm. half an hour, that drags. Observe yeah. another feeding. If the next feeding is the same interval, oh yes, time to increase the feed. That is the yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. But yep. the baby cries and he or she arches forward in the tummy, that is a cry of discomfort. I'm not comfortable at the tummy. I'm calling mm -hmm. But such babies, burp them. Burp yeah. them. And if they are more than a month, do a tummy massage for them. Mm. The baby yeah. comes and the mouth keep gapping like a goldfish, that is calling for more milk. All right? Don't let them gap too long. Sometimes mummies are a bit hesitant to give a pacifier. But I always tell mom, if this baby has gone off the track for three to four weeks, to tune the baby back, room was not built in a day. You have to be a bit patient, correct it by giving a pacifier and just observe. I promise you within five minutes, this baby is going off to sleep and the pacifier will drop. That's it. Rather than let them gap the mouth and swallowing more air. And I always tell them, which fish has the biggest stomach? The goldfish, mm -hmm. because the mouth is always gapping. <laughs> So, yeah, don't let your baby turn into a goldfish. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Lillian. Okay, now this next question is actually for Joanna. Okay, um, so if one has a stillbirth or a miscarriage before, can the same person still buy insurance for the next child? Um, With such a history? Can you, can you repeat again? Okay, if somebody has, you know, previously had a stillbirth or miscarriage, can they still buy insurance for the next unborn child, I guess. Okay. Um, it will depend on which trimester, at, at, at which trimester it's happened. Like I said, mm -hmm. um, the insurance company is more than happy to extend the coverage. So during application, do make it clear 
at which trimester and the incidence of the episode, how did it happen, was it an accident, so on and so forth. So that will give uh, the, the insurance company a good position to, to whether to assess, uh, to, to assess the, 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 the position of the application. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So yeah, take note when, uh, yeah, you'll probably get asked this question by. by I, uh, yeah, I, I have something to add um, at this juncture is that um, I would say that uh, try to make an application of your prenatal plan. Uh, since the earliest you can apply for it is at week 13, try to get it as early as possible. The reason I'm saying this because as, as the stages go by, there will be more scan being done. So the moment uh, there's anything being picked up, it's make it very, very challenging for the mom to make an application for the maternity insurance. Mm, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you for sharing that, Joanna. Thank okay. You. So the next question is going to be targeted. To, uh, well, it's going to be for Sister Lillian to answer. Now, during the question is, um, you know, when it comes to, to the, the food, yeah. Um, is spicy food okay for confinement? I guess some, some moms still like to eat chili. Uh. During my first pregnancy, my confinement nanny cooked food with loads of black pepper. She said it was good for healing wounds. Is that true? Well, pepper doesn't has nothing to do with healing the wound, all right? But it does improve to expel gas from the tummy. Mm. But eating chili is all right. Reason? Because chili is rich in vitamin A and vitamin C. So it's all right to eat chili. I had two mm. kids and I eat chili throughout my confinement. It, with pepper, chili and all that, it's fine. That's good enough to keep your body warm. You don't need liquor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. See? Okay. You can you can still take your your pepper. But um, yeah, not too much. Like. I think everything in moderation, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Wise. Yep. Okay. Next question is for Joanna. Once again, there are plans that only cover eight pregnancy complications. For my mom, 18 congenital... Wow. Okay. The question is, there are, there are some plans that only cover eight pregnancy complications for mom. 18 congenital illnesses for babies. Is this coverage range sufficient? Well, um... Dear mother, really, <laughs> you, you, you have to, you have to, because different mom, women have different needs in terms of what they want for the pregnancy protection and what they want for the child. So uh, it doesn't mean that the, the one that has the A uh, complication and 15 congenital illness is uh, uh, inferior of the one that is high, having a higher coverage. So like I said, you list down what, are you looking for what do you want this plan to do for you and match it with how extensive the insurance company is extending it to you that will mm. be something that i would say um uh, best suit your your needs mm -hmm. yeah so find out what your needs are yes uh, anyhow buy speak to your consultant and find out what works best for you correct Thank you. Okay, Thank you. next question is for Sister Lillian again. Okay, during confinement, some people said they must only drink red date tea without plain water. I think you talked about it just now, but is this a correct, uh, is, this, is this right or is it a misconception? You mentioned that we should be well hydrated um, to get about three liters of fluids in a day. All right, good question. Very common practice in every home. Almost 90% of postnatal homes comes with red date and uh, red dates and long -an tea. Long -an, yeah. I'm not against it. First and foremost, both are fruits, right? But what are you yeah. drinking, mommy? You are drinking sugary water. When you boil them, you are extracting the sugary water from the dry fruits. So yes, you are drinking, but you are drinking sugary water. So I used to yeah. share with mom's this, my years of E and E, my experience and my exposure. I mm. always use only one cup of the, uh, fruits. Either you use 12 red dates or you use one tablespoon of long an and put in four stalks of lemongrass. Mm. Lemon, this yeah. recipe, one of the fruits with lemongrass is actually a traditional a traditional recipe from time immemorial from the Branakan. 
people and you find that they are the ones who don't complain of backaches. Why the value? Lemongrass dispels colic, dispels flatulence and wind. It is an antioxidant. And thirdly, it helps to boost breast milk. Mm. A bit hairy, you need to brush it off the hair, chop it into two, and then just break it to bruise it and boil. That's good enough. Yeah? No mm -hmm. sweet dates and long run, but yeah, a combination is too sweet. And also mm. too much dates throughout for 28 days, you find that by the third week, mummies have sore throat. Okay. <laughs> All right. So very good point to raise up, Sister Lillian. Yes, I, I do agree that, you know, the red dates and longan is really a lot of sugar. And if you're going to be staying home a lot during confinement, why do you need so much energy? Um, I think you're best off getting your vitamins and nutrients from other sources as well. But yes, do definitely have your fluids coming from soups, coming from your water, coming from your tea, of course, the right kinds of tea. Don't forget, peppermint tea, some teas do, do affect, um, if I'm not wrong, it does affect milk supply, right? Uh, peppermint. I did, I, heard. Sorry, I did also share with mums, all right? Mm. No, I'm taking water, but whatever is, make sure that drink is warm, all right? So mm. even the same applies when you go for herbal chicken and all that when you do the soup make sure you do not put things like Alexia Anglica in if you do maybe a cup of slices two or three mm. slices weighing less than kui, right? because that will has estrogen and will reduce mm. milk production okay mm. take note <laughs> okay we're gonna take just one last question uh, from our from our panelists today before we move on. Um, and this last question is directed for you, Joanna. Uh, so if somebody has had gestational diabetes after their blood test, will the insurance still cover this person in case um, in future if there's complications after the birth related to gestational diabetes? Uh, can, sorry, can you repeat the question again? Okay, I'll summarize it. If this person has had gestational diabetes, I mean, right. if the blood test reveals that uh, she has the gestational diabetes. Will insurance still cover her for uh, in 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 the late after this this uh, test result has come out, and she wants uh, to buy insurance, but she uh, has gestational gestational uh, diabetes. I'm sorry, because it, it will consider as a pre existing medical condition already. So, um, I'm afraid it it will be very challenging to apply. Yeah, because yeah. you already know the condition, right? Yeah. Yeah. So then mm. after the blood test. Yeah, that's why I, 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 I always um, uh, advise uh, mommy uh, sooner rather than later. I, I also think that um, try to get it before week 20 because that is where the detailed scan, scan comes in, right? Mm. Yes, mm. yes. Mm. Yeah. So sooner rather than later. Don't wait yes. until too late like, like what no. happened to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because after I ended up in ICU, nobody's going to tell me insurance. <laughs> So yes, and you know what? I think you guys still have a lot of questions that have come up with this uh, conversation that we just started. It's gotten the ball rolling for many of you to start thinking about, you know, what you need to do to prepare yourself for, you know, parenthood, okay? So don't wait till it's too late. You know, we do, we do still have a number of webinars coming up. Um, in fact, tomorrow I'm leading one in the morning as well at 11 o'clock. So if you want to learn more about breastfeeding, there's one that's happening tomorrow. For those of you who are moms already in breastfeeding or you know someone. But for now, we are going to release those shoppy vouchers so thank you so much first of all Joanna and Sister Lillian um, we now have that QR code once again and that link at the bottom so if you're having trouble scanning that QR code to get your $3 off voucher to spend at Shopee then please do use that link that's right at the bottom there okay it's a shortened link uh, a bit.ly link so the first 200 of you um, who are here with us today will get this $3 off voucher to spend and there's a it's a no minimum spend voucher that you can use on Shopee's toys kids and babies category all right so anything from this category of Shopee's toys kids and babies you will be able to use it okay and they do have quite a number of deals that are going on right now I know because I was with them yesterday when we did a live stream so there are many items there are many bundles actually not just individual items but bundles where you can actually buy um, at a much cheaper price than if you were to buy it after the 23rd 
So yes, there is a term and condition. There are terms and conditions that apply because these vouchers and the promos that are going on uh, for the parent uh, parenting festival it expires on the twenty third of May, which is the last day. Okay, so do make sure that you guys use this three dollars off voucher by the twenty third of May. Better still, use it tonight. Okay. Now, for those of you who cannot scan the QR code, please click on the link below in the uh, Q and A box. All right, we do have a chat box there, so click on that link if you don't want to call, if you don't want to type it out. So the first two hundred webinar participants will get this three dollars off, no minimum spend on Shopee. But the categories that you can use this three dollars off is for the toys, kids, and babies category in Shopee. All right. Terms and conditions apply, so please look out for it, and it expires once again on the twenty third of May. Right. I can't thank you enough, Joanna and Sister Lillian. I I'm learning so much even as a fourth time mom. Okay, so you know what? You still the it, journey is just never ending. Okay, you will just keep learning and learning and learning. And if you are done with parenting or, or, or having more kids like I am. Share it with your friends, okay? So, like I said, this is only the second webinar of many that are happening this Singapore Parenting Festival, and this is actually brought to you by MediaCorp and the Asian Parent with our official e-commerce partner Shopee, our platinum partner Walk, our gold partners Scotts, Dumex, Milo, Nature One Dairy. The silver partners are Similac, Pampers, and Nan Optipro, Nestle, Nan Optipro Three. The content partners are Center for Fathering. Mums for Life and Dads for Life. Thank you so much, everybody, once again for joining us this evening for the for the webinar. And uh, do sign up for the next webinar happening tomorrow. I will be hosting it once again. And the topic is the A to Z of breastfeeding. So visit spf2021.theasianparent.com. You can register for tomorrow's webinar. You're not too late. So let your friends who are breastfeeding know about this because you know what it's a very painful journey if you do it wrongly okay so there are actually tips that you can learn uh tomorrow at the webinar and i hope to see you all very soon again thank you so much once again uh to sister lillian as well as joanna for all your very useful insights and thank you so much everybody for joining us you do get to watch this recording tomorrow okay by tomorrow it will be up on the facebook page of the asian parents so follow them on facebook and you can actually get um updated with all the other webinars that are coming up as well thank you so much everybody have a wonderful evening bye, bye.